So now we'll be formally starting a discussion on the topic of circular motion and more precisely because we have to talk about circular motion this is a good starting point where we are going to start with our discussion angular displacement and then go on to more concepts. So angular displacement don't be scared by this word is just a fancy name for angles right so angles is something that we uh, are used to dealing with so starting from our elementary education all the way up to high school and then further on we have primarily worked with this unit of the angles called degrees right so measuring angles and degrees and calculating angles based on trigonometric ratios and whatnot so all of this is not entirely new to us but have you ever thought of why is the degree defined in the way that this is defined why uh, why does one circle have 360 degrees so what happened when the degree was being defined was that someone came up with this idea that they said that one circle should be split into 360 parts and then each part and the angle that that produces at the center of the circle is said to be one degree so for example if I just show you this so then this angle from here all the way till here so this really slim slice so that produces an angle of one degree at the center of the circle now there are a lot of questions regarding this as to why did the uh, why did whoever came up with this idea why did they take the idea to split this into 360 parts and not a good round number like maybe 100 and the answer to this is also not very definite this has been debated a lot so a lot of the people think that maybe because uh, our ancestors used to think that one year was not 365 they used to think that this was 360 days so then they can say that uh, that in one day the earth moves an angular displacement or an angle of one degree around the sun so this is one possible reason for this but this is not what we, what we will be focusing on so the degrees in itself up till now it has served as well but we now are going to talk about another unit of the angle and this will have many more added advantages that the degree has and the name of this unit is something called the radian let me just shift this here so the radian is uh, another unit of the angle and the way that this is defined is in terms of some circle properties so let's say we have a pretty normal characteristic circle this is the circle this is the center of the circle so this is how the radian is defined so let's say we are talking about some sector of the circle let's say we take up a slice like this right so the way that a circle is defined is in terms of its radius right that's the only thing you need to actually define a circle so this is the radius and if you're talking about this sector I can also say that this is the arc length of the sector right so the way that this radian this angle is defined is the ratio of the arc length to the radius in terms of symbol I would write this as s upon r so just like how we could define the degree as the angle equal to the angle of a complete circle divided by 360 uh, by 360 degrees so that small angle each of that is one degree so the definition for the radian is slightly different and the examiner asks this question in a variety of ways the examiner can say define the radian or the examiner can also say define one radian and the procedure for doing this is pretty much the same all the time whenever you have to define a unit you go to that formula in which you see that quantity make that the subject of this equation and then talk about the remaining quantities right so you have arc length and radius so if both of these are equal you will get the answer for theta which is the angular displacement as one right and this is one radian so when we're talking about the definition of a radian 
So this is the angle subtended, which is just a fancy word for produced, at the center of a circle by an arc length, right? That's this S here, when it's equal to the radius of the circle. So this is when you have an angle of one radian being produced. Now you also know that for the degree, we used to say that one full rotation, one circle has 360 degrees. But in radians, this is 2 pi. So just to give you a better feel of the radian in itself, how big is one radian? So one radian would then be 360 upon 2 pi. And this turns out to be approximately 57.3 degrees. Right, so this gives you somewhat of a feel as to how much is one radian. Right, so this is 57.3 degrees. If you want to approximate this even further, you can say this is approximately 60 degrees. Now another thing here which is worth mentioning is that the radian is strictly speaking not a unit. Because if I go back up here, theta is the radian. This is how the radian is defined. This theta is this angle in radian. So this is really the ratio of two lengths. The ratio of the arc length to another length which is the radius. So if I write meters and meters here, you know that these meters would cancel out. So really this theta, this angle in radians has not, ha does not have a unit. But just to clarify that we are using an angle, we use this word, the radian with it. But strictly speaking, this is not a unit. So the radian is not really a unit. So the next idea that can always come in handy, although this really uh, is not asked all that much by the examiner, is the is how you convert between degrees and radians. So converting between degrees and radians, right? So either from degrees to radians or the other way around. How do you go about doing this? Now this idea is really simple. You can also see this for yourself when you use this unitary method. If you say that 360 degrees is 2 pi radians and then whatever unknown angle you have you can work for that. But the bottom line is just that when you go from radians to degrees you multiply by three sixty upon two pi and when you go from degrees to radians you multiply by two pi upon three sixty. Now some people instead of calling this a multiplication they say that divide by the same number and that's also totally on you whatever you want to work with but I do remember this better and the way that I do uh, I remember this is in whatever quantity you are going to you keep that in the numerator right so when you're multiplying by that you keep that in the numerator and whatever you're going from you keep that in the denominator right and you can also see this applying in the convergence from degrees to radians so going to radians you keep 2 pi at the top and 360 at the bottom and vice versa so now if we quickly assess ourselves so 60 degrees to radians how do we go about doing this so degrees to radians right so 60 is what I have to convert I'm going to degrees sorry I'm going to radians so I keep 2 pi on the top and divide by 360 so 60 ones are 60 6 are so 2 pi upon 6 this becomes pi by 3 radians now similarly if the question was this for example convert 5 pi by 4 radians to degrees right so this time out you since you're going to degrees you keep 360 in the numerator and you keep 2 pi in the denominator. You can see the pi's are cancelling out. This is 90. So 5 times 90 is 450 degrees. Right? So this was a pretty primary lecture in which we learned as to how to work with 
radians, how do you define it, and how do you go on converting this from radians to degrees, and the other way around. So see you in the next video.